Good Tuesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a quick look outside that weather window. And I don't think there are any complaints about our weather today. Look at this just spectacular shot from our uh, SkyFi Tower camera. It's up on Wenatchee Heights. We call it the cross camera. And you can see lots of clear skies, blue sky, and some wispy high clouds out there today. Boy, virtually no wind this afternoon, and that made for just a beautiful day. Let's take a quick look ahead now as we move through the middle and into the end of the week. I'll tell you, tomorrow, very, very nice as well. Most of Thursday, okay, and then a chance for rain showers in the afternoon, and then a good chance for rain Thursday night, maybe into Friday before things quiet down again by the weekend. I'll have all those weather details coming up for you a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. Friends are raising money for the family of the Leavenworth paraglider killed in a Sunday morning accident. Governor Jay Inslee followed through yesterday on his promise to order in-person classes for all Washington K-12 schools and 12th District State Representatives Keith Gaynor and Mike Steele will hold a virtual town hall on March 23rd to give an update on the 2021 session of the state legislature. But first, our top story tonight. Prosecutors on Monday formally charged a Wenatchee woman with stealing more than $160,000 from an elderly relative. 67-year-old Deborah Sue Peake allegedly used her power of attorney over the relative's affairs to transfer that money illegally into her own accounts between 2017 and 2020. She's now charged in Chelan County Superior Court with one count of felony first-degree theft from a vulnerable adult. The investigation began while Peek was already facing trial for allegedly operating a heroin ring out of her home with three other men. She currently is free on $25,000 bond. Well, friends are raising money for the family of the Leavenworth paraglider killed in a Sunday morning accident. 42-year-old Sam Broadus died in the crash near Eagle Creek Road, about five miles northeast of Leavenworth. Witnesses told the Chelan County Sheriff's Office that Broadus was performing a barrel roll at about 1,000 feet when his glider lost lift and fell to the earth. He was declared dead at the scene. Those who knew him quickly started a GoFundMe page for his wife and two-year-old son. The family is expecting another child later this spring. Governor Jay Inslee followed through Monday on his promise to order in-person classes for all Washington K-12 schools. The governor signed the executive order he announced last week, which demands that all schools offer an in-person option as well as remote learning. It's effective March 5th for students up to 6th grade and April 19th for all others. More than half of all school districts in the state, including in North Central Washington, already offers some in-person teaching. It's been a year since the original emergency order that closed Washington schools due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Meanwhile, 12th District State Representatives Keith Gaynor and Mike Steele will hold a virtual town hall March 23rd to give an update on the 2021 session of the state legislature. The hour-long town hall will begin at 6 p.m. and be limited to 500 attendees, so constituents are urged to sign up early for that Zoom meeting. You can sign up by following a link from either of the lawmakers' websites at representativemikesteel.com or representativekeithgainer.com. Coming up next, Dr. Mark Johnson gives a local COVID-19 update to the Washington State Hospital Association. The Chelan Douglas Health District will hold a live COVID-19 vaccination question and answer session tomorrow. For the first time in 21 years, Mission Ridge and Ski and Board Resort says they'll be open seven days a week into April. And author Jamie Thomas of Wenatchee has been named a finalist for Book of the Year honors in the fantasy category at this June's Indies Awards. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Traditional values and innovation in honoring the life of each family we serve is part of the ministry of Heritage Memorial Chapel. Our staff is committed to walk with your family with compassion through this time of grief. We are here to help and here to serve. 
the right kind of help when you need it most. Heritage Memorial Chapel. It's estimated that one third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest Craft Beers and 30 Chelan Valley Wines and Ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Hi, Stephen Devilbus here, Branch Manager of Beneficial and Home Care. We are an equal opportunity employer and we do not discriminate in employment or services. It is our mission to maximize our clients' physical health and sense of mental well-being while remaining in the comfort of their home. We are currently seeking professional caregivers who share our mission to help our clients live safely and comfortably at home. Call Beneficial and Home Care. Schedule your interview today, 509-663-7900. Welcome back. In another news, about 8% of Wenatchee Valley residents who now qualify for COVID-19 vaccines are Hispanic ages 65 and up. That category will expand tomorrow as Washington moves into phase three of its pandemic recovery plan, allowing more frontline essential workers. In a press conference yesterday with the Washington State Hospital Association, Dr. Mark Johnson of Confluence Health said his hospital network is trying to emphasize vaccine equity as it administers shots around the valley. Uh, over the last two weeks uh, at Confluence Health in particular, 14% um, and then last week 20% of all our vaccines were administered to uh, Latinx population. Um, so uh, we've been trying to focus on vaccine equi equity in particular. Um, of course, the, the large vaccine administration site here in Wenatchee um, that is being run primarily by um, through state assistance and public health, um, they have been vaccinating a large number of patients, um, sometimes 800 to 1200 per day. And so that gives us the opportunity to really focus on vaccine equity at our site. So for instance, on Saturday, um, 400 individuals were vaccinated through our hospital system um, and a large percentage of them were Latinx population. Uh, we've been focusing on having some clinic, uh, vaccine clinic times that um, have a lot of uh, Spanish speaking staff and have um, culturally sensitive and um, language appropriate uh, vaccine educational information that we can provide to, um, to these folks. And I think that's critically important. Um, in our hospital, um, we are seeing that our hospital census has shifted quite a bit. Uh, so as of this morning, we have six COVID patients in our hospital admitted with um, severe or critical COVID-19, one of which is in the ICU. When we were at our uh, highest census in December in uh, our hospital, we had 43 hospitalized patients with COVID-19 which of course in a 179 bed hospital represents a huge percentage of our um, hospitalized patients. The Chelan Douglas Health District will hold a live COVID-19 vaccination question and answer session tomorrow from 3 to 4 p.m. The event will be available on Zoom and from the museum's Facebook page on Facebook Live. It's a great opportunity for the public to hear from local public health officials about the COVID-19 vaccine, availability, vaccination locations, as well as vaccine safety and efficacy. Panelists will include Dr. Malcolm Butler, health officer at the Chelan Douglas Health District, and Jolyn Colson, senior vice president and vaccine coordinator at Confluence Health. Well, for the first time in 21 years, Mission Ridge and Ski and Board Resort says they'll be open seven days a week into April. The Wenatchee Ski Resort received almost 120% of the mountain's normal snowfall through February. 
Operations are now scheduled to continue through April 4th. That's two full weeks ahead, or two full weeks rather, of additional skiing time. Meanwhile, author Jamie Thomas of Wenatchee has been named a finalist for Book of the Year honors in the fantasy category at this June's Indies Awards for her gothic fantasy novel, Asperfell. Forward Reviews magazine hosts the Indies Awards to honor the best fiction and nonfiction titles from university and small independent presses each year. Finalists in 55 categories will be judged by a panel of libraries and booksellers, and the winners will be announced on June 17th. Asper Fell was recently named one of the top 10 best debut fantasy, sci-fi, and horror novels of 2020 by Booklist Magazine. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. Dr. Wayne Latimer's chiropractic and integrative multi-care specializes in all level of injury care. If you've been injured in an auto accident, on the job, have a sports injury, or a simple fall, call today for a free consultation. They offer a combined multi-care approach with medical, chiropractic, physical therapy, massage, and acupuncture. For relief from long-standing injuries to basic solutions for the weekend warrior, Latimer's chiropractic integrative multi-care is one stop, one location. You love to help others. You need a solid career. You can have it all with help from Charter College. Our 10-month medical assistant program prepares you to work in healthcare settings like physician offices, rehab centers, and clinics. You'll learn to take patient vitals, assist with exams, administer injections, and maintain medical records. When you're ready to launch a rewarding healthcare career, visit chartercollege.edu because we work to get you to work. Your bed is more than just a frame and a mattress. It's the place you look forward to after a long day. The source of your comfort and a good night's rest to reset. People spend over one third of their lives in bed, so it's important to find the mattress that's right for you, which is why Walker's Furniture carries the best brands like iComfort, Beautyrest, and Tempur-Pedic with great financing always available so you can get a better mattress today and pay for it later. From Walker's, your mattress experts. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. The Apple Blossom Festival announced today that the show will go on this year, but not until June. In tonight's feature story, Apple Blossom Administrator Darcy Christofferson talked with NCW Life Stan Kuntz about what's being planned. But pretty much everything is being planned that is, is normal. You know, the dates again are June 3rd through the 13th. We actually are having our golf tournament though on May 13th. We felt that that would be better to keep that in May. Uh, June is cherries and a lot of our golfers are fruit people. So we didn't want to interfere with cherries. So we felt we'll keep our golf tournament May 13th. Uh, our grand parade, well, we're calling it the Stemilt and Kais Fiber Community Parade. So it's going to be a combo parade on June 12th uh, of Youth Parade entries, Grand Parade entries will be honoring last year's uh, royalty and dignitaries along with this year's royalty and dignitaries. Um, and we, of course, will have guidelines for that, six feet apart, masks. And that's pretty much what our festival will be like. Everybody needs to be six feet apart. Everybody needs to wear masks. Everybody needs to wash their hands. We'll, of course, work with waste management and Apple Valley pumping on all sanitizing aspects of the festival. We will have entertainment um, on the Gisa stage. We will have um, a beer garden. We'll be doing our beer garden. And then we will have arts and crafts also, and of course the food. So everything in that little area is, is going to be happening. And we'll have a carnival. So we're, we're still debating on where that carnival will be because the Town Toyota Center is the vaccination headquarters and also Eastmont's graduation on June 4th. So we're kind of playing around with those dates and where we're going to have it, but we do have a second option uh, for the carnival uh, in, if the Town Toyota Center does not work.
Well, that's great news, isn't it? And the two combined parades, that should be something to see, that's for sure. Let's switch gears now and take a look at our beautiful north central Washington weather, especially today. I'll tell you what, hope you had a chance to get outside and enjoy yourself today. Temperatures in the mid 50s, all kinds of bright blue sunshine. And look at this great shot from up on Wenatchee Heights, looking down at the Wenatchee Valley. Just a fantastic day today. Unofficially high temperature this afternoon got up to 55 degrees. That's a tick above where we should be at 54 for this time of year. 35 now is our normal low temperature for the year. So 30 degrees. That was still five degrees below where we should be. Record high 72 in 72. What a beautiful day. 25 once again last year for the second day in a row. Our record low. Uh, sunrise 711 now and sunset will be tonight at 708. Let's take a look at what we can expect as we get into Wednesday. Things look just as nice as today. In fact, maybe a touch warmer, especially over in the Columbia Basin. Check that out. Moses Lake, 60 degrees tomorrow, afraid of 58. Quincy, 57. A little bit cooler then from the Wenatchee Valley back into the higher elevations, mainly lower to mid 50s. Wenatchee are high tomorrow, about 54 degrees. As we take a look at our next seven days, a lot going on. Tonight, partly cloudy skies. We'll see just light breezes out there, so a beautiful overnight tonight. High pressure here still dominating our weather, but that area of low pressure is what could bring us some wet weather as we get into the end of the week. Wednesday, partly cloudy, as I mentioned, not a bad day tomorrow. We'll be calm and very mild in parts of central and eastern Washington with highs well into the upper 50s and 60s. By late in the day, Wednesday and especially Thursday afternoon, here it is, about a 30% chance for daytime showers. That goes up to a 60% chance. There we have it by Thursday night. I don't think we'll see snow, but a good chance for rain overnight Thursday. That could mean because we have such a charged atmosphere, maybe some scattered showers on Friday too. Mostly cloudy, a 30% chance that some of that will make it over the Cascades. Hopefully for football action, that won't happen. And as we get into the weekend, a cooler airflow moving into Washington from the northwest. So we will see slightly cooler temperatures Saturday, mostly sunny, mainly temperatures in the uh, lower 50s, maybe some mid 50s on Saturday. Sunday, partly cloudy. A few more clouds moving in, slightly below normal temperatures. But remember, that's 55. So we're talking 52 or 53. And as we start our next work week on Monday, partly cloudy skies, just spotty clouds all over Washington state and a touch warmer with highs back into the mid 50s. Let's take a look now at your seven day forecast tonight. 33 degrees, light wind and partly cloudy for your or Wednesday rather in 50 Four. A good chance for rain by Thursday night. A 60% chance of the wet stuff in 57. Maybe some scattered showers on Friday. It's going to be mostly cloudy, about 54 for our high. And then a bit of a cool down on Saturday and Sunday with highs both days around 52. And then on Monday, back to more sunshine with mostly sunny skies, a high temperature of 54. And that's a look at your local weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Save Mart is the place to go if you are in the market for home furnishings. They have rows and rows of sofas, love seats, recliners and chairs in a vast array of fabrics and colors. Name brands include Ashley, Best and Stanton. With pictures, lamps and tables to complement your new furniture, Save Mart is a one-stop shop. Save Mart offers 12 months special financing on approval of credit. Save Mart also offers free delivery, setup, and haul away in their service area. Serving the Wenatchee Valley for over 50 years. Located on North Wenatchee Avenue or visit online at SaveMart.net. The world's first six function multi pro tailgate. Available in the GMC Sierra. With TV advertising, what we want to do is more deeply connect with the community. People spot me in different parts around North Central, you know, Costco and Wenatchee say, hey, you're the pizza guy. And so they wouldn't know that if it weren't for the, for the TV commercials we've done. We've been here so long that people already know who we are and what we do, but to have that 
image flash on their television screen as opposed to just hearing in the radio or seeing in the newspaper. I just love the fact that we can actually put our finger on when a customer comes in and says, I saw your ad. It's becoming increasingly difficult in this digital age to know where are your customers listening or watching, because I watch all the different channels that they watch too, like Cooking Channel, History Channel, and so it was wonderful to be able to be on there. I would say that uh, if you want to do business in Wenatchee, then you should connect with the people of Wenatchee, and there's no better way to do that than with NCW Life. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life channel. And a happy Tuesday to you. For the first time in 30 years, the Washington State women's basketball team will play in the NCAA tournament. Cougar players and coaches were gathered together to watch ESPN's broadcast of Selection Monday and had to wait only 40 seconds into the broadcast to find out they'd been tabbed as a number nine seed in the Mercado division. New Zealand freshman guard Charlize Ledger Walker says she and her teammates were ecstatic when their name was called so soon. We were just so overjoyed, uh, you know, so happy and proud uh, when we saw our name come up on the screen. Most of us probably weren't even ready because it was, I think, the second, um, you know, the second group of teams that um, we called out. So, yeah, we were all just so happy, so excited. This is what we've been working towards and what we've been working for. So to see our name come up on the screen there was just a massive, massive moment um, for our team and for this program. Now, the one and only time the Cougars women's program was in the NCAA tournament was 1991. WSU was an 11th seed then and lost in its first round to Northwestern. Coach Cammie Etheridge is proud of her team and the program to earn the invitation. Yeah, it's hard to process past just getting in and the excitement of that and and just what a great moment to celebrate with our team, to um, to know a lot of people are watching, a lot of Coug fans out there that are watching and are really proud and excited for this program and, and for this university. Again, I just love the story behind it, the fact that we've only been to one in our entire history and, and that one was 30 years ago. So I uh, told the team just how much it's just a, it's a neat story. We want to become relevant in women's basketball. We want to become uh, a household name for uh, women's basketball and a top program in the country. And and this was the first step to get into the NCAA tournament to make some waves and to have a chance to, to play a great South Florida team. Etheridge is in her third year as head coach at Washington State. Her teams won only four Pac-12 games in each of the first two years before winning nine this season. She says the NCAA tournament invite is just a building block in her goals for the program. I think if I were to think back on coming and, you know, you know, it's not a great tradition, but I, I think once you're here and you just know how hard we struggled those first two years and then you get to know the Pac-12 and how good it's become over the years that, you know, you, you wonder if you got yourself into something that you couldn't, you couldn't get out of. And, and is there a reason why the tradition was like that? But, you know, that's just not us. And as people and as coaches and as a staff and, and ultimately, you know, how we built our culture and the kinds of players and, and character kids and, and competitors that we brought into this program, you know, that's still the beauty of women's basketball is that you can make a dent into uh, the top 25 or you can, you can create a, a great winning environment. And um, this is the first step to that. This is us getting in, uh, but I'm, I'm anxious for that. I'm excited for that. I want us to do well. But I think this is just a, a, a building block. You know, we're, we're going up from here and we're going to create a, a great environment here. And it's going to be a we're going to change this tradition. The tradition is going to become a, a, a relevant women's basketball program. Washington State will face South Florida in the first round on Sunday at 630 our time on ESPN2. Well, meanwhile, 75 miles up US 195 in Spokane. The mood was celebratory, but completely expected for the Gonzaga women's team. Bulldogs earned a number five seed in the NCAA tournament. Gonzaga's first round opponent will be 12th seeded Belmont's winners of the Ohio Valley Conference tournament. This will be the first NCAA tournament in three years for Okanagan's Jill Townsend. She was injured in 2019 when Gonzaga reached the second round against Oregon State. 
Bulldogs entered the tournament with a 23-3 record, having won the WCC regular season and the tournament titles. Gonzaga and Belmont's game will be Monday at 1 o'clock and televised on ESPNU. Well, coming up today on the NCAA Live channel, girls soccer. The game time was moved up to 6 o'clock for Eastbound and Quincy at Wildcat Stadium, so we'll have it live on our Facebook stream at 5.50 with the pregame. It will air on television an hour later at 6.50. Sebastian Moraga and Matt Weiss and we'll have your play-by-play. -play. Other action today, Wenatchee travels to Okanagan to take on the Bulldogs. Brewster hosting Tadaskid. Bridgeport visits Manson. There you see Eastmont and Quincy. Moses Lake and Cascade will play at Leboffto Field of the Apple Bowl since the Kodiak Field is still unplayable. That match at 6 o'clock, then at 7, Cashmere visits Ephrata. Well, Arizona pitcher struck out 10 Mariner batters in the Diamondbacks 6-2 win on Monday. Seattle's runs came in a two-run sixth on an RBI ground out and an RBI single by J.P. Crawford. Taylor Trammell hit a leadoff spot in the leadoff spot, that is, going one for two with a run and a walk. L.J. Newsom dropped to 1-1 on the spring. He took the loss, lasting three and a third, allowed one run on two hits, three strikeouts. Mariners send Justice Sheffield to the mound tonight against Kansas City. First pitch coming up at 6.05. Well, the Seahawks have lost a key piece of its defense to free agency. Cornerback Shaquille Griffin has signed with the Jacksonville Jaguars on a three year $44.5 million contract, $29 million of that guaranteed. According to Michael DiRocco of ESPN, Griffin and the Seahawks were far apart on money before free agency began this week. Griffin and his twin brother Shaquem have made quite a name for themselves in Seattle. Shaquem also is an unrestricted free agent. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Grantstrom on the NCW Life Channel. Grant, back to you. Thank you, Eric. And finally tonight, once again, the state is asking for help in naming a new tow plow, and the suggestions are already rolling in. Wait till you hear some of these. The state's third tow plow follows on the heels of the Big Laplowski, which was the winning name for plow number two last November. Nominations are made on the Washington State Department of Transportation East Twitter feed. <coughs> Excuse me. So far, Lil Plow Wow. Plowosaurus Rex, Plow Jam, and the Fast and the Flurious have been suggested. Or how about Apocalypse Plow? More nominations will be accepted until Friday. My favorite personal name is Ploward Stern. Now we'll check in with Dan Koontz for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thank you very much, Grant. On tomorrow's Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, Gene Jessup returns to this program. A couple of months ago, uh, Gene came on to talk about his new book, Between Heaven and Earth, during his time as a smoke jumper back in the 1950s. He's followed that book up with kind of an autobiographical tome. It's called Living a Dream as It Should Be and All is Well. And Gene is a self-published author. He's a pretty cool guy, and I'm looking forward to talking to him tomorrow about his new book. We'll have Gene Jessup on, plus everything you need to start your Wednesday, St. Patty's Day. Tura -lura -lura. I can't do Irish. I can barely do American. Grant, back to you. Thanks, Dan. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-NCWL. That's 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night. Gentlemen, I'm Kerry Condotta. This is the 12th District TV show, aired eight times every week on NCW Life TV. We cover business and politics like no one else does it because I've been there and done it. 30 years self-employed, 16 years in the House of Representatives, and 12 years running campaigns across the state of Washington. That resume means you're getting information you can't get anywhere else. This is the 12th District. I'm Kerry Condotta. Attention, attention, Wenatchee Valley. It's your great opportunity to attend Collins Bogo Sale. This is how it works. 
Buy one red pad clothing sale item and get the second item of equal or lesser value free. We do this twice a year. Help us to clear our fall and winter merchandise and get an amazing bargain. Famous brands such as Joseph Ripkoff, Tribal, French Dressing, Liverpool, Cut, etc. Come see us at Collins where fun meets fashion in downtown Wenatchee. In a world afraid of technology, one man, one show will bring you the newest innovations that may just change your life. This summer, Ray McNeil and your weekly tech update is your weekly tech update with Ray McNeil.